In this video, I'm going to be talking about charging methods. How do objects get charged and what are the methods to charge them? So there are three main charging methods that you see on the screen, which are friction, otherwise known as the triboelectric effect, conduction, and induction. In order to understand the charging methods, you have to understand the nature of charge, um, the atom, and what charges move and what don't in order for objects to have an imbalance of charges to make them charged overall. So you need to know a little bit about the atomic structure. And if you just look at this um, diagram of an atom, which, which isn't really great, but it shows that the electrons are the outermost particle, so they are the only particle transferred. So in here is our nucleus of the atom, which is filled with the positive protons, and then the little orange spheres that aren't marked are the neutrons that aren't charged. And that nucleus um, is basically going to stay put. So none of those subatomic particles are going to move out of the atom. The electrons, which are orbiting as a little cloud around the nucleus, um, can move from one place to another. Um, they can move pretty easily or be a little bit more difficult to move depending on the type of atom. Okay, so long story short, the only way things really get charged overall is if they gain or lose electrons because electrons can be pulled from the outermost parts of the atom. All right, so let's take a look at our first scenario over here, which is charging through friction. So I think we probably know that if you take two objects and rub them together, they typically won't get charged. If you grab random objects and rub them together, um, there may be some exchange of electrons, but overall, most things won't get charged. So they have to be fairly different on the triboelectric series. The triboelectric series is basically a list of things showing what things are not good at holding on to electrons, and what things hold on to their electrons pretty tightly. So if these things are significantly different, then one of the objects will lose electrons and the other one will pick them up. So in this case over here, if you have a rubber balloon and some kind of soft uh, sweater or fleece, um, the balloon is particularly good at holding on to its electrons. So when it interacts with almost anything, it's gonna hold on to its electrons pretty tightly and it's not gonna let them go. Um, for the sweater, um, generally, softer materials don't really hold on to their electrons very well. So in this case, um, the electrons can move around pretty loosely. So that's why if you kind of like move around or take your jacket off or slide out of a chair, you can feel your sweater uh, maybe starting to stick to you because it's becoming charged. So initially, both of these objects are covered with a bunch of positive and negative charges. Okay, so it has a ton of these atoms that compose both of those materials. And then overall, there isn't much of an imbalance of protons and electrons. So overall, they are neutral. So they're not really gonna attract or repel from each other. Now, if you rub the two together, now because of their differences in the way they hold electrons, the sweater is gonna start transferring electrons over. So after that interaction occurs, the energy you put in causes the friction. The um, amount of friction applied is going to make some of the electrons transfer from the sweater over to the balloon. And in that case, now there are more electrons attached to the balloon on the side that was in contact with the sweater. So now that there's an imbalance of charges, there's more electrons than protons. This overall has a negative charge. And then because the sweater now has more positive charges than negative charges, it is positively charged. Okay, so remember, a sweater won't become a positively charged by gaining protons. It will just lose electrons 
and then have less electrons to try to balance out those protons and overall it'll become positively charged. All right, so that's how friction or the triboelectric effect works. Our second one, conduction, is usually defined as charging by contact. So it's basically an object that sort of zaps electrons into another object. So say for example, um, you had a plastic rod and you rub this on the sweater so it becomes charged up because of the triboelectric effect because this object happens to be better at holding on to electrons. It's a better insulator. So it's going to pull electrons from here onto here. And now we'll just say this rod is all charged up. Now, if you put it into contact with a conductor, Okay, so say it's just a piece of metal. It could be um, a can, it could be a metal sphere, um, it could be metal of any sort. Uh, most conductive materials are gonna let electrons flow to them pretty easily. So um, a general rule with particles is opposites attract. So positives and negatives are gonna try to pull towards each other. So this balloon is going to stick to this sweater after they're done with their interaction because this is negative and this is positive. And things that are the same charge are gonna repel each other. So these electrons don't like particularly like to be next to each other. So as they're loaded up next to each other, they don't necessarily want to be next to each other, but this rod is doing a pretty good job of hanging on to them. But when it touches this conductor and they have a pathway to kind of spread out a little more, it's gonna sort of zap some electrons over here. Okay. And usually conduction is defined as charging through contact. Um, sometimes if the thing is really charged up, they might just get really close and, in, and then, you know, within an inch of space or separation, some of those electrons might already jump over to the conductor. Um, but for the most part, it is charging through contact. All right. Now for the final one is charging through induction. And one of the primary traits for induction, it is charging by no contact. So say for example, this is the same balloon that we had over here. So it has more negative charges on it overall. Let's draw these in a little bit darker. So it has more negative charges overall. It still has positives, but overall it is negatively charged. Now, when you bring something closer and closer to an object, that attraction or repulsion is going to get exponentially larger. So if you take a balloon and you bring it closer and closer to a wall, you're going to feel the, the attraction to the wall get exponentially larger. It's a little bit hard to tell, um, just feeling by hand. But say, for example, we have two conductive spheres here with two insulated handles. So we'll say something like a metal sphere with a plastic handle. Now, if you bring it close, it's already gonna start affecting the charges, okay? It's gonna to want to push away the same charges. So electrons are going to repel other electrons and then it's going to attract the protons and try to pull them over, okay? Now, one of the rules is when you have two conductive surfaces touching, it's basically like they're one big surface now because they have like this pathway now because they're in contact. So if I take two quarters and then put them against each other, they're basically gonna share all of their electrons. One of them isn't gonna be more charged than the other because they're touching each other, they're conductive, and they are the same size. So remember, electrons can move, so it's gonna pull, um, or sorry, it's gonna push some electrons and repel them back. Okay, and we'll put some pluses in here because it's not going to be all electrons and it's going to make those protons lean in some but because of that repulsion of the electrons it's going to push some over here and then it's going to leave this one a little bit more positive and then what you can do is once you separate these two with their insulated handles you're going to have a sphere 
that is predominantly positive. And a sphere that is predominantly negative. And now you have charged two objects without um, contacting it with the charge object. Okay. When you cause these objects to have their charges separated, you call that polarization. So polarization is a commonly used term when talking about static electricity. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Okay, so that polarization is usually that separating or basically just shifting those charges by pulling the opposite charge closer and then repelling that same charge away. So that's why a something like a balloon basically will try to stick to almost anything. So if you put it against a person, you put it against a wall, you put it against a chair, it will always try to pull those protons in closer and then push those electrons back farther. And because those protons pull in closer, it's going to feel like the object is positively charged, although overall it's not really charged, but it feels those protons a little bit more because they're closer to the object. And then it doesn't quite feel those electrons too much because it's pushed them back already. So that's why charged objects tend to attract to neutral objects. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand the different charging methods. You definitely wanna know the basics of what an atom looks like and how the subatomic particles move. And then we have our three main methods of how they get charged um, by using friction, some form of contact or some form of no contact by polarizing and then separating objects. So again, I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.